Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm assuming that the post-lunch sessions are generally a little sloppier, so I'm hoping that I'll kind of enliven the session a little bit more. But before I begin, I would like to uh, express my heartiest gratitude to Mike Ho uh, and Dr. Howard Rosen to invite me over here for this event. I'm kind of quite grateful to that. But more so, I'm kind of quite uh, happy with the, the staff and the basically organizing committee of the symposium for and especially all the young running around volunteers who have made the you know little session much more happier with even the holy around. So I'm very thankful to all the young people around in the room. Thank you very much. Uh, the presentation is uh, largely in three parts that I'm going to talk about. The first part will look at the uh, Woodcrafts of India, there are multiple set of woodcrafts, but I'm going to focus on a couple of them. Uh, the second part will look at the application of the woodcrafts, and the third part will look at what we do at our Design Innovation and Craft Resource Center, which is largely to look at the craft design innovations. Uh, but before kind of I embark upon a little journey, uh, I thought I should give you a little bit more brief uh, about how my association with wood had started. I uh, have written three books and surprisingly all of those three books are somewhere associated and related to woodcraft and wood architecture. So my first book which was around 12 years back is on the wood carvings of the traditional houses of Gujarat. Uh, it's called Naksh and then there's a larger title to this and then there's Matra and Pratha. Uh, they both are associated and related to the uh, wooden architecture of uh, Himachal Pradesh and the cultural association to that. But apart from that, I've done multiple set of workshops in which trying to bring in uh, various uh, wood carvers, wood crafts people along with designers uh, and uh, let's say entrepreneurs and do multiple set of workshops. I've taught wood basically workshop at the institute. So in multiple ways, I've been associated with wood knowingly and unknowingly. Uh, so I'm going to give you a kind of overview on the woodcrafts. Uh, so there are multiple set of com combinations of various woodcrafts which exist within India, but uh, some of them are the most prominent one are the wood carving, wood piercing, the wood turning and lacquering as one of the means because it's a kind of quite a low scale, the wood mosaic and the fret work which is the most specialty set of a craft which exists, uh, wood painting one of the most popular ones in multiple parts and then comes the inlay which pocketry, marquetry uh, becomes. And the most common, which is not even considered as a craft, is largely the carpentry and the structural work. So huge number and set of, let's say, traditional architecture has been built by a lot of carpenters, but they are not recognized as craftspeople, but they are merely, let's say, building trades people. Uh, so some few examples of it at this point. This is one of the uh, house in Almora in Uttarakhand, which shows a very exquisite example of wood carving and a piercing work. A second example is a wood turning in some of the houses in Himachal Pradesh. They basically hang this wooden pendants and they are like a pivot. They basically make a resonating sound and hence a kind of a great association back to nature, you know, and uh, the idea of a wind which exists over there. So it's, it's a kind of response to also the nature at the point. Uh, some of the fret work which is seen in the Haveli in Vaso in Gujarat, uh, very interestingly, a little difficult to kind of zoom in, but if you see the middle medallion, you know, it has got a lot of uh, apsaras dancing, you know, and it's kind of a representation of a human desire for fantasy, for imagination, and this is largely used in the main living room of uh, a house. Uh, as I said, painting is one of the most popular one in a lot of folk tradition, and uh, so even after basically they do wood carving or any set of other crafts, they would like to paint it. If you kind of notice, there are some of the wood carvers from India in the basically the field outside in the exhibition from Saranpur, and they also have started painting the silver color, bright gaudy silver colors, and they really love this. So this whole idea of color has been a very embedded phenomena in India. The inlay work largely became very popular after a colonial influences, not really before that. Uh, so we had a lot of inlay which was happening at much royal basic level where idea of ivory, mother of pearl, you know, precious stones. But at common local level market, it became very popular after Britishers came in and kind of had a flair or maybe liking for it. And that's where a lot of Indian craftspeople basically started picking up the inlay work. Now, as I said, the structural work or the basically carpentry work is kind of least considered, but it's one of the most important because in that you really have to understand the 
mathematical principles and the structure of wood and the wood load. And this is one of the palace in Theog in Himachal Pradesh, where the entire uh, roof is being made out of wood with the shingles of uh, stone on the top. So giving you a little bit more brief on uh, a more example set of within the architecture. So if you really this look at this village, this is Gavas in Himachal Pradesh. Now, uh, we accidentally bumped onto this village, but this is like a, one of the most purest example of vernacular and traditional architecture in Himachal. So this is an entire village where a new set of construction of let's say brick and concrete is not basically uh, kind of overtaken and they still have a lot of traditional set of architecture which exists. So right from the wall, roof, floor, ceiling, uh, huge amount of wood which is being used at this point. Uh, the Haveli in Gujarat in Vaso where you see beautifully carved covered in columns with uh, the balcony at the top and this is a timber bonded uh, structure which is largely earthquake resistant. So both the examples what I am showing in Himachal which is Katkuni architecture and timber bonding structure both are earthquake resistant. Uh, ex so the interiors, uh, if you really see, they are like a phenomenal, let's say, amalgamation of not one woodcraft but multiple segment of woodcraft from inlay to carving to carpentry to fretwork, you know, uh, and they all come together at a single place. And uh, the people had a kind of a great liking towards the crafts. Vis-a-vis -vis the kind of a bare example of the balconies in Himachal, which kind of overlook the Himalayas, are also completely made out of wood, but more at a structural level. So the courtyards of houses in Gujarat represent one of the exquisite set of carvings. Uh, so they kind of represent a lot of mythical beast to geometrical motif to natural motif. And this was a very common feature. There are around 60,000 such houses only within Ahmedabad city. And if you really look at the entire Gujarat, they'll be kind of quite high a number. Uh, even the idea of a smaller elements, so not only basically balconies, but smaller elements to be uh, decorated, to be carved, has been kind of quite popular. In all. It was a kind of a cultural phenomena as well as an expression of wealth. Uh, very interestingly, the amalgamation of a kind of a colonial set of architecture with the Indian where the inbuilt furniture became very popular. So inbuilt furniture was one of the popular ones over which the colonial influence and the art deco influence started coming in. But in that case also, a lot of, uh, let's say, homogenization of crafts and the styles started happening. So it is not purely art deco as a European art deco, but more of an Indian art deco-ish with a lot of paintings, glasswork, a lot of designs, you know, and the proportions started coming as what Indians wanted. Uh, this is one of the chests in the rural part of Gujarat. They are used to keep the mattresses on the top and the bottom ones were used for largely the utensils. But uh, they are very commonly found in a lot of rural parts of Gujarat and if you kind of notice on the left hand side they have a horse brackets and which are also mythical connotations to kind of guard what you have. Uh, Vis-a-vis a little bit more of a folk set of a craft and the carving which is found and this is just basically like two weeks back we kind of discovered we went in the village and we thought this is phenomenal because the kind of expression which really happens in the villages by these craftspeople uh, is, is it kind of goes beyond our so-called stylistic design you know logistics at some point. Uh, some of the local products which are being made, which are day-to-day -day use, are lacquer work, which is in Nirona. And they actually work uh, with uh, only a hand set of tools. And hence, they're able to make only the smaller ones. But their precision and their aesthetic abilities of color is one of the most phenomenal one when it come, really comes to the lacquer work. Vis-a-vis, -vis, the lot of children's toys have been part of it. We have grown with a lot of wooden toys. And now we have kind of moved to a lot of plastic, you know, but wooden toys have been one of the most popular ones within the Indian domain. Uh, now, all of this has been largely possible due to the various master craftspeople and the plethora of knowledge within India. Uh, and hence I thought I need to really talk a little bit about more about them. So if you look at India, they largely practice at a couple of levels. So in terms of the practice, they are either working as an individual or they are part of a smaller group, which is still basically a group of people together, then they're part of a guild, and either then they're working as basically an employee 
or somewhere. And in that position, five minutes, they either work as a, and basically kind of an innovator, creator, to a laborer. So they basically have position both at the extreme end, you know, right from a skilled laborer to somebody who is a creator. And I think both are kind of valid depending on the kind of skill sets they have. These are some of the master builders in India. Uh, they work on two grounds. One is on site, which means they actually take their entire production to basically site and they work there, or where they basically bring the smaller set of tools. So what we see a workshop behind in the campus, they're more like that. So they basically bring their set of tools and they work at this point and they create large scale architecture to smaller scale products to a more of an off site phenomena. So this is one of the workshop in Dalka, which is doing the wood turning and lacquer work. Now, one of the most interesting part about this workshop is they work with this motor and the motor is actually attached to the ceiling, right? And that one motor would kind of power down two or three lathe machine at the same time. You know, and that's the indigenous set of innovations what they do. Uh, what this was basically what it is as a current situation, but what we are really kind of moving towards is what is the future? What are we trying to do? And hence, I'm going to give a little bit more broader outlook to what our research center is doing. So. Uh, as we say, the Indian woodcraft's current scenario, it kind of lies in multiple set of craft domain from a very traditional to handicraft to heritage craft to even a studio and a contemporary crafts where actually there are designers working with more digital and CNC machines vis-a-vis -vis even there are a lot of craft entrepreneurs have started using CNC machines. At the same point, somebody is using purely hand tools. So it, it kind of lies in a much more larger, bro broader segment. We deal with more of a building crafts, which means all the crafts associated to interiors and architecture. So at Design Innovation and Craft Resource Center, which is like a research center, a nodal body between an institution as well as an organization. And hence, all our projects are largely enhancing the academic pedagogy, but at the same time, we are autonomous and hence we can serve the society. So we work at a, we are at a kind of quite a right juncture at this point. And we not only work with wood, but we work with multiple set of materials which deal with building crafts. So from wood, metal, earth, stone, grass, textile. But because this is largely moving towards the wood craft, I'm going to focus our examples towards that. But some of the activities we do is research, documentation, mapping, workshops. We have innovation studios where multiple people come together, education, training, resource building and dissemination. So we kind of try and look at a much holistic picture. So in the woodcraft section, we look at not only crafts and crafts people, but also the products processes and the intangible aspect of value of products vis-a-vis -vis the market. But for us, the education and innovation becomes one of the prime area of focus to deal upon. So one of the areas that we largely do is mapping. Now, when we started this center, uh, we wanted to really look for the crafts people and realize where are these people, right? And there is no information, there is no yellow book, there is no directory, nothing like it. And hence, we kind of embarked upon a project of doing a mapping. So we have developed a mobile mapping tool, right, where we have a basically mobile app in order to map this set of craftspeople who are then basically brought onto a larger set of directory. And this tool has also been extended to not only people, but also to the enterprises and various traditional and vernacular building, furniture, elements, as well as objects. So this tool, basically, once you do the mapping, it then links to the server and goes online, which is like buildingcraftlab.dicrc.in. So it has the online data, which is there, because we very strongly believe that anything that we have, it needs to be shared. So this is like a, a full set of a directory. We have got around 1,000 artisans across India knowing about, basically, talking about what they do. This is a directory. It not, does, it's not like a visiting card, but actually it showcases their work. So it is more like a LinkedIn come Behance format put together at this point. Uh, this is the, another mapping of some of the buildings and the furniture element. Uh, we do extensive research for basically doing SWOT analysis to design intervention within the craft. But we kind of take a great pride in terms of the documentation that we do in terms of drawings because we think it's a great asset even for future. Our major actions are looking at 10 years down the line and not only looking at current. And hence, basically, we, have, we do from building till the last screw level of details. And we very strongly believe in collaboration. So we have kind of modeled basically various collaboration creation where people, designers, individuals kind of come together in order to take the crafts forward. Uh, 
One thing that we realized while working on the Medinim project is that we wanted to look at precedents of anybody else who has done the work of such kinds. And we realized that there are not many people or people who have done it, they are not showcased it. So what we started doing is developing multiple models. And this is one of the collaborative craft design innovation model which people can use in order to do such innovations, multiple workshops, bringing people together because we very strongly believe that if we leave, we should leave the footsteps behind so that somebody can follow. Even if you're leaving footsteps behind, somebody's following, takes over, we'll be more than happy to follow those people. And that's the kind of a philosophy with which we kind of operate. So I'm gonna show three sets of smaller examples, and those are the last ones, some of them, to basically show how people have come together. So we have an innovation fellowship program where people and designers come together, work with craftspeople in order to develop a new set of innovations. So that's Jimena, who's from Mexico, and working with uh, a wood turner basically from Dolka uh, in the workshop. The whole uh, premise was to develop products which are contemporary today's time. So this is more like do it yourself. It's more like a kits and parts. So you can actually basically build it, pack it, courier it, and also basically choose your own set of colors. So it is a modular storage system which is being developed from a smaller one stool to an entire basically base, what it can cover. So you can build it over a period of time, you can pack it. So it's like a knock it down, do it yourself, as well as choose your own set of colors because that's what the lacquer work allows them to do that. You know, uh, A second is when we basically brought multiple designers at national level uh, along with craftspeople. So wood carvers, turners, block makers, sculpture, inlay people, all coming together, working together for 20 days at one point, you know, and trying to brainstorm with the idea of co-creation, idea of basically where the craftspeople are not merely a laborer, but they're also seen as someone who will help in the conceptual development, in the design development. And in that, we kind of developed multiple set of products, which we have kind of linked back to the market. So, but these are a little more large scale products, more at interior architecture level. And then we kind of do a dissemination of it through exhibitions and media. And this is the last example where we kind of extended this at an international level. We had around six universities associated with it and hence multiple set of people from international level working for 20 days together. And this is one example in which uh, this uh, girl, uh, Erina, she worked with the wood turners but very interestingly what she did was she kind of split the wood into four parts and then kind of reassembled it. A very simple concept at one point, you know, which even a normal craftsperson can do. So our idea is that any new ideas are to be implemented also at a much larger scale and came up with a, a stool. Uh, we have tried and tested this tool at multiple levels with multiple weight load and it has sustained till now. So that's the kind of things that we do. We also try and basically come out with some kind of a new things which are not purely market oriented but where new systems can evolve. So this is a new way of looking at wood turning and how it can evolve as a system in order to develop further. And then we come out with uh, exhibitions because we strongly believe in disseminating the ideas to a larger set of public in order that uh, basically the crafts and the idea of innovation is percolated within the society. Yeah, and that's it. Thank you very much.